Hello and welcome to another Sega Creator Focus, where we interview content creators who are also fans of everything Sega. Today we're joined by Indeedy. Hello Indeedy, how are you? I'm good, thanks. Ibs. How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. So for those watching who don't know who you are, uh, tell them about yourself. Uh, yeah, sure. So I'm Indeedy, as you know. Um, I'm a part-time variety streamer from the UK um, and recently partnered on Twitch. So Congratulations on that, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much. It still it still doesn't feel real, you know. It still feels very uh, very fresh. I've still got affiliate brain at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do um, a lot of part time um, streaming. So I stream four days a week. Um, and when I'm not streaming, I work as um, a full time QA engineer. So yeah, that that little part there about being a QA engineer. There's uh, some relevance about Sega. Uh, you actually have a. a uh, <laughs> An interesting history with Sega, which is actually how we met. We actually know each other in real life. Uh, you, yes. uh, you used to work at Sega at the same time as me back in, oh, the, the mid 2000s, the late late 2000s. It was. Yeah. Um, we were both in the QA department. So I'll let you explain what you what you did because we did kind of different jobs back then. But I'll let you explain. Yeah. So my my role as a QA at Sega was predominantly to break everything um, and make it as polished as possible so that you know people that are playing the game is you know they don't run into any issues so a lot of my job was to play through the game from start to finish uh, play through perhaps the same levels for eight hours um to make sure that nothing breaks and report issues and, and all that kind of stuff it was a lot of fun you know so i had a good time with it that's a very common misconception about qa people think oh you just play games all day you do play games all day but you will play literally you, you're, not, you're not playing it like a, a normal person would play it by yeah. trying to finish the game. You're literally running into walls, trying to make things, you know, make the game break basically. So that again, like as, as yeah. Didi said, if you, if you report a bug on something that doesn't work, uh, the developers will fix it, hopefully, uh, you know, within the next build because they get built new builds every day. And then, yeah. you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's not an easy job, but it is, it's fun, but not in the way that you're thinking what you're playing games all day long. You know, you get no, to, no, you get to know the game quite <laughs> intimately, but you don't get to enjoy it as, uh, as you know, a, a consumer would. But it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's a very important job in the industry. It, uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it needs to get as much attention uh, because at the end of the day, if you look at the credits of a game, you know, you, you, you'll see the QA testers. They are literally like the, the people who have, it's their responsibility to make sure the game runs properly. Um, yeah. And it's thanks to, thanks to the QA uh, testers that games are as good as they are when they're released, when, when they're good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which, yeah, you know, <laughs> we've got, I'm, I'm proud to say, you know, Sega's got a good history of, uh, of you know, because uh, we used to have a reasonably uh, big QA department in the UK. Uh, now the uh, QA department is split between um, Bulgaria and our um, North American uh, North American office. But yeah, uh, so yeah, I think you have a you have a funny story about your time in QA. One in particular, I'll let you explain. <laughs> I do. To be fair, there, there are loads. Like we, we, there was never a dull moment in the QA department, especially like uh, during like break times and stuff like that. Um, but when um when we were testing certain games again like i said you know our main job is to make sure that the game breaks yeah um and i was playing a uh, super monkey ball on the Wii, and um you know i was a project lead back then so a lot of my a lot of my job was to you know manage the other testers but when i ever got to like get my hands on it i just played through the game from start to finish and i got to the end and um the credits roll you know as as you mentioned you know the credits are playing in the back end um and um there was animation. So when um, the names of the, the testers or the people in the game were rolling, the balls would fall down on a platform and roll into a hole. And then the next set would come. At that point, my name had just changed. My surname was very short and then it double barreled to something completely long. And that was implemented in the game. And my surname was just bouncing on the ground and none of the balls went into the holes at all, <laughs> fell on the side of the game and crashed it completely. And that was, I think, about three weeks before we were due to release. So oh, I no. reported it and I'm like, oh, so there's a hard luck crash in the game. And they're like, what happened? I'm like, well, my name broke the game and I'm sorry. <laughs> 
Um, and it was so funny. It was hilarious. Uh, they fixed it really, really quickly. Like, yeah. Out the door, so. <laughs> that's uh, that's an, such an event. There's so many stories. I mean, of those of you watching, if you ever worked in QA, you work in QA, tell us a story about what, you know, it doesn't have to be at Sega. You could be QA working anywhere. And, and there's always fun stories of things that happen. Some not so fun stories as well, which we won't share. Um, just when when games when games you know they, they can they can run into some really uh, funky issues that, uh, that we won't mention. But um, so yeah, and, and you, also just going back to your history with Sega, what was the first Sega game you played or your first experience with Sega? Oh, so I was I was very very young. This is like when Sonic One had come out. Um, and at the time, I, I was one of those kids that always wanted the consoles. My mom's like, no, wait till Christmas or your birthday. So I was always at the arcades um, or in like the, the electronic stores. Um, and one day I was coming home and there was a store called Dixon's. I don't know if you remember Dixon's. Um, yeah, I remember. Similar to Curry's. Yeah, so I went in there and they had Sonic 1 on the Mega Drive and I was like, oh, I want to play. So, you know, being like a, a nine-year-old child, you know, I was like, okay, fine, I'm going in there. Um, and I was playing Sonic 1, and I was so engrossed with playing it um, that the owner of the store saw me come in every day after school, and back Aww. then there was no save data. We have no memory cards back then, you know. We can't just <laughs> yeah. save and, and whatnot. So um, it was very, very reliant on just pausing it and hoping for the best. Um, so what he did, he put an out of order sign on the machine. So nobody touched it until I came home, um, oh. until I came back from school. Um, and the last day I was on the final, the final area of Scrapyard Zone 3, got to like Robotnik right at the end. And I was like, yes, I'm almost there, I'm almost there. I died like seven times before actually beating the game. And I was so excited, but the store was shutting. Um, and it was like seven, 30 and for a nine-year-old child being out oh. after hours when you finish school at 3 30 is not is that's a big no. no bueno so my whole family were looking for me and my uncle was like i wonder if she's at dixon's and like oh. my uncle found me there and brought me home and i'm like mom i clocked to the game and clocked obviously back was, was jargon back then like yeah. complete yeah. we're using english now so we can't use jargon anymore um so i was just like you know, oh my God, I clocked the game, I clocked the game and I was so excited, but the punishment was not exciting at all <laughs> for being out so late. Um, and the funny thing about that story is I actually mentioned that story during my interview with Sega. Um, and both the guys that interviewed me were laughing so hard that it would be a criminal not to have given me the job anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was great. Uh, yeah, that just memories of Dixon's. I don't know if you if if it was the same for you, but why did they always have the TVs up really high, pointing downwards? I know. Like, I know. Just you like just get a stiff cool neck just looking up playing a game yeah. for ages. I think they did that on purpose. Definitely, definitely. Uh, and um, so, what? What's this? Is a hard question. This is what we're going to ask every content creator that comes on this on this uh, on on these videos. It's what's your favorite Sega game of all time? Ah. Uh, God, that is difficult because it depends on the mood. Um, I've got to go to Yakuza. I, I, I'm a big, big Yakuza fan. Like probably my my all time, all time favorite game series. Yakuza Four is probably Yakuza Three or Four are probably my favorite just because of the karaoke songs that were in those particular games. Uh, I, I've got so much love for the series. Like I'm always playing it. I've restarted the whole series again just so that I can just watch the antics and the madness that goes through it. But I love I love that series. Like definitely, I would probably say my favorite, although I don't know, Project Diva is also a favorite. Like this is uh, difficult. Yes. <laughs> it's so yes. hard. I love yes. rhythm games as well. Like, so. Which, uh, which Yakuza is your favorite? <sighs> Again, hard question. Oh. oh, I don't know. I probably would say Yakuza 4. I, I really oh, it's fine. The, 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 the correct answer is they're all amazing, right? But they there's are. always, but, but everyone's got their, <laughs> everyone's got their their personal favorite. A lot of people I know say Yakuza Five is their favorite, um, yeah. and and, and uh, you know, uh, uh, most people will say Zero because it's the only one they've played because they haven't gone on to the others yet. This is which are, uh, worth pointing out that all available on Game Pass. If you have Game Pass, you have no excuse. You can play from zero all the way up to Like a Dragon. Like a Dragon yes. was recently this month added to Game Pass as well. So you've got 
all of them you can play uh, all the mainline ones which is amazing i actually have a funny story about yakuza as well uh, which links back to Ooh. qa um so uh yakuza came out in japan um in i think it was 2005 or 2006 i can't remember which year it was um and it's because of two qa testers you know who they are the um uh, it's two qa testers who are working in the sega europe office literally put together on their own accord put together because basically what happened was yakuza came out in japan and it wasn't deemed uh worthy of, be of being released in the west basically at mm -hmm. that time right um and um it was uh you know they the, the you know the number crunches were like oh we don't know if it's going to sell enough um and they would have to go through the whole process of localizing the game getting all the voices localized and the text and everything and this is on a ps2 as well this is like you know you can't this is the days of where you couldn't patch games. Like a game comes on a disc and that's it. That's all you get. And and what happened was these two QA testers, um, they on their own accord got together, sat down and put together a presentation. These guys didn't have any experience in marketing or product or anything. They just literally were, and, and, and the key thing here is they were both Shenmue fans, massive Shenmue fans. Uh, and they put together a pitch and went to the marketing team and said, this is why you need to bring Yakuza out in the West. This is why it needs to come out. And they did such a good job that the marketing team spoke to the other teams and there was an internal discussion. They spoke to Sega Japan. Yakuza came out on the PS2 in the West and, and, it, uh, and it did well. It, it, you know, and that's what started it. That was the first Yakuza game to come out. Even though Zero is the first one in the story, um, Yakuza on the PS2, the original one, which yeah. you can play now, you know, if you don't have a PS2 dot or you can play the game as uh, in its uh, in its uh, remastered form in uh, Yakuza Kiwami and Kiwami 2, which are basically uh, remakes of Yakuza 1 and Yakuza 2 that came out originally on the PS2. Um, and they're all both available on Game Pass as well. Um, but yes, you, uh, you they came out and, and, and again, Yakuza 2 and then they, they all came out, uh, you know, they all came out in the West from that point because they they found their audience. The audience was there. You know, um, so sometimes it takes uh, the right person at the right time to to give a, a nudge. And I always I love telling that story because I got to witness it. I just got to see these guys who were so passionate. I, mean, I was cynical. I was like, they're never going to do it. You know, they're not going to listen to you guys. No, they do. They do. That's no so matter good. whether it's Sega or another publisher, people will listen. If you if you uh, you know, if you if you say the right, you know, if you're in the right place at the right time, things can happen. Mm. So, you know, fantastic. Uh, it's a fantastic story of what happened with Yakuza and it's literally because of those two people that it came out in, in the West and they weren't people who work in, you know, the games division of Sega where they do, you know, like uh, uh, like what we have for Searchlight for Sega where they, they search for up and coming games, potential games yeah. that Sega could publish. It was literally back then, you know, we're, we're talking like really like, you know, mid, mid cycle PS2 or, or no, the end of cycle of PS2. So, yeah. Um, so currently, what are you playing now in terms of Sega games? Oh, I'm still playing Yakuza. Like, <laughs> I can't, which one I can't are you on now? Um, so I've just finished uh, Kawami Two because I played. Um, I'd finished playing uh, Like a Dragon, and then I went back to play um, Yakuza Zero. Then I just literally went through the cycle. Um, so I've just finished uh, Yakuza Kawami Two, and I'm about to jump on Yakuza Three. Um, I've also been playing um, a lot of Project D, but I played quite a lot. I actually play it on my Vita as well oh, like wow. other than playing it on the switch and and on my playstation i do still play it on my vita um quite a lot um and then if i'm not playing that i've been playing a lot of catherine as well um and persona persona 5 um i play a lot of stuff off stream as well because it's just more relaxing that way that was going to be my question as well like the games that you play do you mostly play them on because a lot of streamers i know they only play the game on stream so they can play it with their community and their audience yeah. um, so they don't miss a thing uh but some people decide to play uh, you know so they want to enjoy the experience on their own and immerse themselves completely by themselves uh in the yeah. story so yeah so i guess it depends on the game doesn't it yeah, I mean, because I'm usually really chatty with my community, um, and I know with games like Yakuza that it's very, very story driven, um, yeah. and it's kind of like if you miss something, you're gonna have to go back and and you know check over it so you don't actually miss what's happening in the story. So sure, if I'm talking sure. to the chat and 
you know, imagine him has done something outlandish. And I'm like, oh, wait, what did he do? I can't rewind it to do that. So, like, I will play it more so off stream. Unless they're like, oh, you know, let's, let's play it on stream. I'll do that. But I'll go through, like, side missions and show the chat the other areas of the game um, that yeah. they can actually get involved with. So, you know, they love karaoke. They love watching me fail at baseball. And, you know, they love meeting all of the little side characters. Um, and they love anything with Majin Ryan in it as well. So He's amazing. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <Fantastic>. <laughs> <I adore> him. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the uh it's known as Majima is Bay. That's what it is, he isn't is. it? Everyone he's everyone. He well, it's just split between Kiryu and uh and Majima. Yeah, that? it was it was always Kiryu for me, but there was a situation that happened um with my my um fiance at the moment. Um and if it wasn't for Majima, I would probably never have gone on a first date with my uh, with my fiance. Oh wow! So, yeah, so um, you know, back then when Tinder was cool, um, uh, I met. I was about to like shut down the complete the app completely and remove it because I couldn't be bothered. Um, right. And then I saw this one picture of this guy who looked exactly like Majima with like the like everything, the eye patch and everything, and I'm like. Hold on, wait. <laughs> I need Swipe right. Swipe yeah, right quick. And like, I was just like, hold on, wait. And he was like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's go. We like, we had our first date at Bone Daddy's and we were talking and like, we're just five years later and now we're getting married. So, you know, amazing, again, amazing. Anything, Sega's done a lot <laughs> in my life. So, you know, thank you. <laughs> oh, amazing. That's fantastic. Um, so, just uh, in terms of your, your streaming, um, how long have you been doing it for now? um a little over three years about three years and two months now see it's possible it's you know again like we always give the advice if you don't if you don't see the numbers coming in the audience just keep doing it right mm, i mean sorry yeah. i've i've spoken ahead i should really be asking you what's your advice <laughs> for streamers that was the, that's the last part it's you tell us what you advice you would give <laughs> for anyone who wants to be a streamer or is streaming and kind of finding it difficult to kind of you know grow their audience yeah so i mean i actually teach stream school um every few months and amazing one thing that i do like to tell people is focus on you, your brand and your community before thinking about the numbers, before thinking about the sponsorships, before thinking about the end game and don't have an end game, you know, like you don't know where streaming can take you, whether you go full-time or part-time. I do this part-time and, you know, it feels like I've got a full-time job, but if you really want to do it, then you put in the effort, you got to put in the work. But a lot of people always say, oh, you know, it's always about numbers. Oh, I can't get any viewers talk like there's no one there stream stream as if you're streaming to a thousand or zero but as long as you're having fun people have fun with you and then that's how you start um you know building your brand without mm -hmm. even realizing you're building it so once you've got that just ride the wave sound advice sound advice uh dd thank you so much for being with us today it's been a fantastic oh, so had a fantastic time talking to you thank um you. and you can see all of uh, uh dd's links in the description if you please go and follow her um and uh we'll be back soon with another creative focus video so until next time take care bye bye